Hey guys, happy Sunday to you. Uh, we're going to do something a little different today than I've ever done before on this channel. There's going to be no intro, no music, no nothing. It's just going to be me and you. And I'm going to do something a little different that I've been thinking about doing for a while. Hopefully you'll follow me down this wormhole. And it's something you enjoy. I'm not promoting these videos. I'm not putting these videos out there anywhere. These videos will be strictly driven by you. Uh, if you like them, you'll share them. If you don't, you won't. And we'll be able to see from the analytics how popular this really is. But to set it up, at the end of every video I do, I always tell everybody God bless. Hope the Lord blesses you today more than he did yesterday. I've always done that. I always said to him be the glory. Well, I'm going to start doing something new. I'm going to do it on Sundays only. So I'm going to try to do this every Sunday as long as... Uh, as long as you guys want to see it, I'm going to try to do this every Sunday. And we're going to do a thing where we're going to use the most important tool I keep in my toolbox. Old Bible's in kind of tattered shape. But we're going to do a thing and we're going to call it Garage Gospel. And every Sunday we're going to do an episode of Garage Gospel. So, for the first episode of Garage Gospel, I'm going to try to talk about a uh, section of the Bible, some passages in the Bible that I have always, I've always been some of my favorite things in the Bible. The message of it has always been one of my favorites in the Bible. It would be easy to do, you know, John three sixteen or or one of those that bumper sticker verses. But I want to do something a little different, something that maybe some of you have never even heard. Especially if you don't dig into the Bible a lot, and that's that's up to you. Um, something you may not have ever really heard anybody talk about. Uh, it's in the Old Testament, and it's the book of Job. Now, I like the book of Job because it's a very good message. It's very encouraging. And uh, I believe, if you will let me get through this, we'll read some passages here. I believe... This is something we'll real. I believe this is something that will relate to every single person out there. People that uh, know me personally know. Uh, at one time, I was serving in a church where I would give devotionals and stuff, and this was one that I'd done there, and people seemed to like it really well. But let's set this up first by saying this. This this message, this these verses here, this entire book of Job is a book of hope. It's a book to give you encouragement. And it may not seem like that at first, but like everything, it takes a minute to simmer, just like any good, just like any, you know, good stew would. You gotta simmer it for a minute. You know, when we go out to the racetrack, we don't fire the car up and just take off down the track. We've got to let her warm up. So we've got to let this warm up just for a minute. Again, this is going to be something we're going to do on Sundays, Monday through Friday. We'll do car content, race content, but we're going to do garage gospel on Sundays. A little long-winded, I know, on the intro, but I want to let you guys know where we're going. So, if you've ever dealt with anything, if you've ever struggled with anything, if you've ever had any hardships, let me show you why we've got encouragement from the book of Job. First, let's look at who the Bible, let's just read from the Bible and let's look at what or who the Bible says Job was. It says, Job, let's see, Job, who was he? This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Now, pay attention to this next part right here. Verse 2, he had seven sons, three daughters, Verse 3, he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys. He was the greatest man among all of the people of the East. So the Bible's trying to tell us here that Job was somebody. Job was, insert the richest man you can think of right here, that was Job. And insert the wealthiest man, however you want, that was Job. Uh, Job had uh, 
Seven sons, three daughters he owned, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys. This was a man of massive wealth. But it also says early in the morning he would sacrifice burnt offerings for each of them, thinking perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. So Job would burn sacrifices and give sacrifices to God just in case somebody had sinned and didn't even realize they sinned. That's how righteous Job was. So the Bible tells us that not only was Job a wealthy, rich man, but Job was also a very, very holy man. Now, throughout the book of Job, it's a, actually a kind of a short book. It's only got, you know, 42 chapters, and they're all short. You can read the book of Job fairly quickly. So, throughout the book of Job, several things happen, and we won't read every, every passage here, but there is a section here where Satan has a conversation with the Lord. And he tells the Lord that Job is only, only your servant because you have blessed him so much. In uh, verse 9 here it says, Does Job fear God? This is, this is Satan talking. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has, you have blessed the work of his hands so that his flock and his herds are spread throughout the land. Verse 11. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will curse you to your face. So Satan approaches the Lord and says, The only reason Job honors you. The only reason that Job praises you, the only reason Job worships you and serves you is because of all you've given him. He's trying to make Job sound like he's fake. And I mean, we all know these people out here that, that have it all, and you think the only reason they love life so much is because of what they have. Now I know I said this is going to be an encouraging thing, about you know going through some stuff and dealing with stuff, and this is where we get to it. The Lord said this in verse twelve. The Lord said to Satan, "Very well, then, ten, then everything he has in your take everything he has in your hands, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger." God told Satan, "You can take it all, take everything he has, but do not put a finger on the man." And the Bible tells us in verse 14 and 15 that uh, his oxen and donkeys were plowing the field and grazing when, they, when his field hands came under attack and they basically took everything he had. Took all of his, uh, everything, he lost everything he had there. And then it said, uh, another messenger came, uh, Another enemy had formed raid parties and swept down your camels and carried them off uh, and then put your servants to the sword. I only escaped to come tell you a servant had come told him that. So now he's lost his livestock and his employees, his servants. Then it says, while he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking uh, wine at your oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept through from the desert and struck four corners of the house it collapsed on them and they are dead and I am the only one who escaped to tell you so in the course of just one day Job has lost his children he's lost all of his livestock he's lost all of his servants and he has nothing he's lost everything he had we can all agree that's a pretty bad day. We've had bad days, but have we ever had a day that bad? He's lost everything. And, and get, follow me down this. I'm telling you this is going to be encouraging. Just listen. 
Job has lost everything he owns, and this is Job's response. Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. When everything Job had was taken away, Job praised the Lord. He lost everything. He praised the Lord. So, we get to chapter 2. And the Lord and Satan have this conversation again. And in verse 3 here, it says, There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and he is upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you have incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Verse 4, Skin for skin, Satan replied, a man who will give all he has for his own life, but stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and his bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. So Satan now comes to the Lord and says, Well, okay, you took everything he had, but he's still healthy. And a man that has health will praise you. So the Lord told him, Very well then, he is in your hands but you must spare his life. The Lord told him, said, you can do whatever you want to to him health-wise, but you can't, you can't kill him. But you can do whatever you want to. So it goes on through this thing, and it basically talks about just terrible disease that plagues Job now. He's got boils on his skin. He can't get out of bed. He's in terrible, terrible shape. To the point where even his wife, who was all he had left, told him this. His wife said to him in verse 9, His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Verse 10, he replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Job in a terrible situation. He's lost everything. Even his wife's now telling him, just die, just curse God and die. You're in terrible condition. You're in bad health. You got nothing left. And Job in that moment still says, how can we take the good if we don't take the bad? Lord is still Lord. It goes through this thing and uh, it talks about his friends coming to him and they're trying to get him to do this. And, and it goes through his whole ordeal. So Job had went through all this and he tells, you know, he tells his wife, she will not accept good. Can we, shall we accept good but not accept the, the trouble? And the Bible says, in this Job did not sin in what he said. Job was going through a terrible time. We can all admit we've probably never went through hardship like what Job was going through in that, in that moment. Now, I don't know exactly if we know he pretty much lost everything he had in a, in, in, in a course of a day or so. We know that was fairly quickly everything he had was wiped out. We don't know how long this disease progressed that Job was fighting with, that Job was horrible with. But here's what we know. We know two things so far in this story. Two things that we do know that is in this Bible right here. Number one, Job still praised God. Job still put his hope in the Lord. And number two, Job didn't know this because Job didn't have the Bible to read. But God was in control. See, don't miss the fact that any time the enemy wanted to attack Job, he had to ask for God's permission first. God was in control and God allowed him to do so much. Not because he was punishing Job, but because he wanted to show that Job was an honorable man. Now, we can look at all of this that goes on, and here's the encouraging part. Here's the part that we need to understand. Here's the part where we need to understand how great God is. We can look at all of this. Chapter 42, verse 12. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand ox, yoke of oxen, a thousand donkeys. And 
he also had seven sons, three daughters. He goes through here and gives their names and all, and it says, The father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. Now, here's what we need to understand. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first part. Job praised God the entire time, no matter what he was going through. And understand the big picture in this, Job didn't know there was going to be a chapter 42. Job didn't know he was going to get to this part. Job didn't know that if he just kept praising God, that there would be a greater reward at the end of it. Job didn't know any of that stuff. We have the Bible. We know how the story turns out. Job did not know how the story turned out. Job did not know that there was going to be a blessing of double what he had. He did not know that. But God did. And God rewarded him so much more toward the latter part of his life than what he had at the front of his life up here. It says that, it says that uh, at the beginning, it said Job owned 7,000 sheep. At the end, it said Job owned 14,000 sheep. At the beginning, it says he had 3,000 camels. At the end, it said he had 6,000 camels. At the beginning, it said he had 500 yoke oxen, 500 donkeys. At the end, he had 1,000 oxen and 1,000 donkeys. He blessed his life more. He was richer. He was bigger. He was more powerful. And he still, it was all about praising God. And it said, after this, Job lived a hundred and forty years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And he still died old and full of years. What I'm trying to tell you is it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. You have a chapter 42. You may be in chapter 1, you may be in chapter 3, maybe you're in chapter 5, who knows, but you have a chapter 42. There was no way Job could have known how the last part of his life would go. The latter, it doesn't say the last part, it says the latter part of his life. It doesn't, doesn't say that Job had any, Job didn't have any clue about the latter part of his life. All Job knew is I'm just going to keep praising God. No matter what happens, I'm just going to praise God. No matter how much today brings on me, I'm going to praise God. No matter how many people don't believe in me. Remember, in this, his wife was the only one that had was still there. And his wife even gave up and told him, just die. His friends was telling him that. But no matter how many people told him, you can't, beat this. You can't get through this. He just praised God and he gave God the glory and he laid his heart out there for God and praised God every moment of it and God rewarded him in the end for being a faithful follower and a faithful servant of his. So what I'm trying to tell you so what I'm trying to tell you today is no matter how bad things look, no matter how bleak things look, no matter how this heart did you get? No matter what you're going through today, there is a chapter 42. Now, I don't know what your chapter 42 looks like. I don't know what your chapter 1 looks like. I don't know what my chapter 42 looks like. But what I know is just keep praising God. Keep giving God the glory. And He will give you a chapter 42. There's not much more I can say about that other than this. I know there's some people out there right now. I'm not a I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I don't I don't claim to be some uh, Bible scholar. All I know is I read from the Word of the Scripture, which is God's Word, and it gives me constant encouragement. If you have not taken a moment to read from God's Word. Just take a moment and read in there. You can get an app on your phone. You can use an old raggedy Bible like I got. I love my old Bible. It's raggedy. Some pages are torn and there's clips in here holding stuff together. But I love my old raggedy Bible. I mean, this old Bible's been through a lot of stuff. Been through a lot of places. And I know that whatever I'm going through, the answer is here. Now, I may not be smart enough sometimes to find it but I know it's in here.
So if you haven't had a chance to open a Bible and read it, you got an app on your phone you can do it with. You can get an old Bible you can do it with. Um, you can go to churches and they'll give you a Bible. But this, this right here, will bring you more joy in your life than anything else. One of the biggest things you can do in your life, and this is going to be a way that we're going to end every one of these garage, uh, garage gospel episodes. One of the biggest things you can do in your life is make a commitment to God, and you do that simply by giving your life to Christ. And once you've given your life to Christ, it's not a get out of hell free card, but what it is is saying that you understand that God is on your side and that you understand that He has more for your life. And it's pretty simple to do. I can even help you with that. All you have to do is pray to Him and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I know I've fallen short. But Lord, I understand that you sent your Son. I understand that Jesus died for our, understand, uh, for our sins and was risen from the grave so that we could live better lives. Jesus, come into my heart right now and take over. In your name, Lord, amen. If you pray that to the Lord, you pray that salvation, then I'm not going to tell you your life is going to become better overnight. What I'm going to tell you is that you basically, you build a house in heaven. It's not a get out of hell free card, but it's an invitation for the Lord to come in and work in your life and make you better and better each day. And for Him to fulfill the vision that He set you on this earth for. That's all I got, guys. That's it for me. Uh, I know it kind of fumbled around through this one. This was the first episode. Uh, so anytime you do something the first time, there's going to be a learning curve. What I hope is that you enjoy it enough to where you allow me to keep coming back and doing these on Sundays. Again, this is going to be a Sunday only thing. Uh, Garage Gospel. And... Uh, We'll try to do something different every week, and we'll try to read from the Bible every week. We'll try to talk about it every week, and we'll have service right here every week. I know there may be people out there that can't get to a church. There may be people out there that don't have a church near them. Um, maybe people out there don't feel comfortable. Whatever the case may be, at least you get to hear the Word of God. One thing that's going to stay the same is the way I end it. God bless each and every one of you. I hope the Lord blesses you today more than He did yesterday. To Him be all the glory. Guys, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you hit the subscribe button, like. But again, I'm not going to push these out here. I'm going to leave it to you guys to put, the, put these out there and see how well they work and how well that people receive them. So the only way anybody's going to see these is if you share them. Love you guys. We'll see you on the next one.